Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back to my course Aspects of Biochemical Engineering. Now in the last lecture I started uh, the stoichiometry of biochemical process and the stoichiometry biochemical process basically deal with the intermolecular relationship of different reactant molecule to give the product and also I told you the stoichiometry of bioprocess to gives the two additional thing. One is it, uh, it uh, help us to find out the validity of experimental results and this is on the basis of thermodynamic uh, coefficient of the process because I told you in the aerobic process the thermodynamic uh, coefficient varies from 0.5 to 0.6 and in, in case of anaerobic process it is 0.7. So on the basis of that uh, now in this lecture I, I shall show you how we can uh, do the validity of the experiment results and I how we can solve the, some numerical problems how we can develop some kind of stoichiometry of the the kind of chemical or biochemical processes. Now again let me point out that whenever we, we, we do any kind of stoichiometric analysis I told you uh, first of all we shall have to find we shall have to have the idea of the process. If you do not have the preliminary idea of the process it will be very difficult uh, to analyze the system. So I hope this will be very clear because uh, coming to lectures I, I shall concentrate on solving the different problems. The first thing that I want to point out this particular problems the Klebsiella erogens is produced from glycerol in aerobic culture with ammonia as nitrogen source. Biomass content 8% of as 0.8 gram of biomass is produced for each gram of glycerol consumed. So no major metabolic products are formed. What is the oxygen requirement for this culture in, in mass terms? So, so basically this, uh, this, uh, this equation deals with that uh, glycerol um, is used as a carbon source for the production of biomass and uh, here the biomass that is used that is uh, that is the Klebsiella erogens that is the, the cell mass that is used and um, in this process that we get 0.4 grams of biomass is produced for each, each gram of uh, glycerol forms. Now question comes how we can solve this problem that uh, let us try this. Now as you know that, uh, that you know that y x by s is equal to what 0.4 am I right 0.4 is the y x by s and uh, what is the what is the glycerol formula glycerol glycerol is C H 2 O H C H O H C H O H am I right So this is the molecular weight of 92. Now how many how many carbon atom is there? Uh, one, two, three. So uh, per atom per gram uh, carbon atom, how much will be? What will be the uh, molecular weight of one gram atom? Uh, this glycerol 93 by two. So what I can do? This is point for point four means gram of cells per gram of substrate. Am I right? Now, per gram, if I, I can, I can, I can, I can. What I can do, I can divide that with respect to this uh, molecular weight. So this is a cell. We we know the molecular weight of the cell. The formula in the last the previous lecture, I I have already shown the average formula of the cell mass. So if we take the molecular weight, this is around 26.1 gram and this is uh, 92 by 3. So this will come around 0 0.47. 47 means that is 
this is gram atom biomass or cell biomass or cell whatever we consider by gram atom of substrate this we can we, we can easily find out now why o, o by s why o by, o by s is what that a gram of oxygen required per gram of substrate consumed it can be written like this this is gamma s minus y c into gamma b minus y p and gamma p divided by a 4 now <coughs> now if we here uh, we don't have any product other than biomass so we can assume this is the this is p is uh, 0 because p we have only biomass is the product now if you put the value here you will get this is 0 0.687 and uh, so amount of so amount of uh, amount of o2 require o2 required how we can calculate this is this is uh, this is 0.687 multiplied by 3.32 divided by this is 92 this is 92 by 3 and this is 32 so if you multiply this uh, this is coming around 0 0.72 gram oxygen per gram substrate so you can easily calculate so let me let me repeat it again how we have solved this in this problem i told that clepsilia erogenous is produced and this picture is given this is 0.4 gram of cell produced per gram of substrate now if you want to convert it that how much a gram atom of biomass produced per gram atom of substrate simple we do can divide by the molecular weight and then we can uh, we have this uh, the this uh, why uh, this uh, uh, the oxygen uh, requirement per gram of substrate this is the formula that we have that uh, we have already in the last lecture we have seen that so if we put the value of gamma s uh, then gamma b here and y c and divided by 4 we will get this figure now uh, this is uh, actually this is the gram of oxygen required per gram of the, the that uh, no, this is uh, that is moles of oxygen required per gram atom of uh, atom of uh, substrate. Now, if it is like this, the, the what is the molecular weight of uh, the oxygen? This is 32. What is the gram atom molecular uh, gram atom one gram atom of substrate? 92 by 3. So, if you, you divide that, we will get 0.72 gram of oxygen that is required per gram of substrate consumed. Now, in this problem, the, if you go to the text, I hope everything will be clear. Now, here, what we have seen, this is the this is the formula of the biomass that we have. If we assume that, and this is this is how we have we have we got the molecular weight because uh, how we got the molecular weight. This is uh, this is this is the actually the molecular weight, but it contains the eight percent of as. So you divide by 0 0.92, get the 20. So 26. So uh, 100 grams. And uh, so this will this will be the actual the molecular weight of the so, uh, of the uh, this the total uh, the total mass of the biomass that we have. Now, now here that uh, degree of reduction that we we can easily calculate like this and then molecular weight of glycerol I showed you this and this is the equation that we have then yc that is already calculated I showed you this calculation and uh, and this is how we can do it here this whole calculation we have done it and this is per gram atom of carbon oxygen requirement this is the equation that we have this is moles of oxygen they were produced per gram atom of substrate consumed. The moles, so the molecular weight of oxygen is 32, and uh, then uh, 72 by 3, to 3 is the gram molecular molecular weight of one gram atom of substrate. If you multiply, you will get this substrate. That uh, how much oxygen is required per gram of substrate. So uh, now this is uh, this is how we can do that. Now next problem that we have, this is little bit different. 
that uh, following the macroscopic coefficient should uh, should determine for cultivation of yeast candida utilis on ethanol the substrate consumption of biomass production oxygen consumption fermentative heat produced and then determine the stoichiometry of the process so the here the for the question is little bit similar as compared to the previous equation the reason is that in the previous problem we we have considered glycerol as a carbon source now when the organism was clepsidra and here and we are using the ethanol as a carbon source and our organism is candida utilis so but here we shall have to call the calculate not only the oxygen requirement but also we shall have to calculate how much uh, is the fermented the heat evolve take place how much substrate consumption take place how much the what will be the stoichiometry of the, so complete a uh, complete analysis of the process that uh, is to be taking place uh, taking place in this particular problem so uh, now as i told you as i pointed out that when you analyze any kind of biochemical process first we should have the uh, that preliminary idea that how how this uh, process work now here this is the substrate this is uh, uh, what is the formula of ethanol ethanol formula is c2 h5 oh am i right now this is this i can write c2 h6o now if you divide by 2 it is c h3 o.5 this i can write so you know this is how it has come here this is ch3.5 uh, then oxygen this is aerobic process and ammonia required for the cell mass formation and we get the biomass and also we carbon dioxide and water so this is this idea should we should have what will be the uh, reactant and what will be the product then and only then we can we can analyze the process also otherwise we cannot analyze the process now here we can degree of reduction for substrate biomass and and, and uh, that carbon atom uh, that ratio carbon mass ratio that of the substrate and biomass that we can easily calculate now this is sigma s and sigma b how you can calculate this has been shown here now as you know i told you that aerobic process thermodynamic coefficient varies from 0.5 to 0.6 so i can assume this is 0.6 now if it is 0.6 then i can um, this is y x by s equal to this formula we know so we put the point to 0.6 we this we calculate at 0.92 now y x by o it can be calculated at 3 eta by this now then we can calculate as gram of biomass produced per gram of gram of oxygen used that we can calculate from this here we can calculate then we can calculate the, the oxygen demand this we have done in the previous equation also only the thing is that here it should be yc not gamma c this yc is this and and eta is this so we can we can calculate this yc is coming about this point uh, point 856 now here here if you look at this formula so we are talking about d yc means uh, this is here it will be d so this is this is actually yc yc is the gram atom of biomass produced per gram atom of substrate consumed so we can we can easily calculate uh, then from this uh, this is that is why we have written this is equal to d and this is the 0.85 then b we can calculate from this equation b we find out this and then uh, then we can find out that how much heat evolved if you this is 0.6 uh, if we get and then we 0.6 if we put it is gram atom of um, carbon substrate and uh, and then uh, i told you this we can co convert to gram atom of biomass formation you simply divide by the yield coefficient you can you can you can do it very easily and then this is the simple the elemental analysis 
if you in this equation if you do the elemental card this is the carbon balance this is the oxygen balance this is the hydrogen balance this is the nitrogen balance if you do you will, will all will get all the coefficient value c value uh, we can we can we can g g value different coefficient value and if we put this stoichiometric equation we will find this equation is c a 3 0 0.602 and uh, this is this you can find out so this will give you some idea that what is the theoretical yield of uh, the biomass from gram atom of substrate that you can easily calculate so you have to what i <coughs> suggest you that you should practice it until unless you practice it will not be clear to you because it is simple uh, this uh, uh, this uh, material analysis of the process if you do the material analysis of the process you can you can do it very nicely now as i as i pointed out that you know that stoichiometry of the bio process also give you the idea that about the validity of the experimental results. now this uh, particular problem deals with that now what is this problem problem is that <coughs> during the anaerobic microbial production of ethanol on uh, complex uh, pongal media containing the sugar the following experimental data were recorded from a batch culture process or uh, whose concentration is this this is so here i want to point out like this that ethanol fermentation this is this is considered as the anaerobic process now i, I have already i i explained that the anaerobic process means uh, the, that uh, it uh, organism doesn't require molecular oxygen for their growth and metabolism not only that in case of obligatory anaerobe this molecular oxygen will be will be harmful for them now uh, this ethanol fermentation process that uh, we carried out by the help of uh, saccharomyces cerevisiae now present problem deals with that uh, so it is suppose this is a reactor this is a reactor in this reactor we put your substrate and put your cell mass and under anaerobic condition you run this process and what will be your product your glucose will be converted to ethanol and also you <coughs> it converted to part of the cell mass but one thing i want to point out here that since it is the anaerobic process the amount of cell mass production will be very less because in case of aerobic process if it aerobic then cell mass production will be much much higher ethanol will not be there so only under anaerobic condition ethanol will be produced so what uh, what uh, in this present problem what uh, what we have done we have we have carried out this experiment we draw the sample here and we prepared a table and this is with respect to time we find out the substrate concentration we find out the product concentration we go find out the cell mass concentration we find out that so we can we add different times we can find out the different uh, this concentration now from that we can suppose this is the, this is the zero then uh, we have uh, slowly slowly you come to the maybe your 14 hours i don't know what is the uh, so initially you have some substrate concentration so then finally in the substrate concentration usually it should be zero and product concentration usually is zero initially then finally you have some uh, where substrate is converted to products cell mass you have small amount of cell mass concentration the, which is present at the inoculum and finally this will little bit increase this is the things we have now here we can easily calculate what is the x x by s value how you can calculate if you know that what is the final x value and we know the initial x zero value and we know s0 minus s value s0 is the initial substrate concentration s is the final substrate concentration here so if you, we can find out easily that what is the 
uh, biomass yield. Similarly, I can calculate y p by s that also we can calculate. How we can calculate this is p minus p 0 divided by s 0 minus s. So, I can I can easily calculate the uh, uh, this is uh, the product yield. So, this is this is how this uh, uh, this formula looks this is how this uh, you see that how how uh, how this uh, this problem this is uh, this is different time uh, 0 to 2 hours 4 hours 6 hours 8 hours 10 hours and 12 hours as the biomass concentration keep on rising this is initially it is 1 gram per liter and finally it is 6.4 gram per liter sugar concentration was 50 gram per liter and finally it is 0 and ethanol 0 0.04 very trace amount and finally it is 27 uh, grams per liter so this is the this is the uh, question that we have and we still have to find out whether these experimental results the data that is reporting in this table whether it is right or wrong this we shall have to find out let us see how we can find out how that validity of the experimental results now what we can do first that uh, this is the substrate this is the glucose is converted the glucose if we consider per gram atom carbon this is ch2o you know that now ethanol also c2h6o this we can write ch3o5 and biomass composition this uh, average biomass composition is reported to this we can take into account so so now uh, from the experimental results we can find out from the experimental results we can find out what is the value of y x by s what is the y p by s this is the initial cell mass concentration you can send the, you can find out this you see that uh, this is initial uh, cell mass concentration this is the final cell mass concentration initial sugar concentration final sugar concentration initial ethanol concentration final uh, that uh, ethanol concentration so here if you put this data we we will we'll get uh, this uh, two picture one is uh, that cell mass yield point 106 gram of cell per gram of substrate consumed y p by s is 1.539 uh, gram of ethanol per gram of substrate consumed so this i can then we can calculate from this empirical formula from this gram atom of carbon we can easily calculate what is the gamma s value what is the gamma p value gamma b value we can calculate similarly sigma s sigma b and sigma p we can easily calculate that we can <coughs> we can do the calculation the, this is the value we we obtained and uh, then uh, this is y x by s equal to what this is the equation we have seen previously now why what we shall have to do we shall have to put all the values this is the experimental results and this is this is the um, uh, degree of reduction of substrate and uh, the, and uh, and uh, carbon fraction of the uh, of the uh, substrate and this is the carbon fraction of the biomass and degree of reduction of the biomass then if you put the all these values here you can find out the eta value uh, what is the eta value you get it is uh, 0.135 and then uh, y, y p by s i can write that is epsilon p equal to gamma s sigma s by gamma p by uh, sigma p so again if we uh, this value we have already calculated and this uh, value already we, we also calculated from the empirical formula and so if we put all these values then we find this is 1.055 now so uh, so what do you know that uh, thermodynamic what is the thermodynamic coefficient thermo what is the thermodynamic coefficient this is equal to eta plus epsilon p so uh, so what is the eta value this is the, the eta value and this is the epsilon so it is uh, coming what this is 0 0.135 plus 1.055 
So we know that uh, the anaerobic process, the uh, thermodynamic coefficient is how much? Thermodynamic the, the, is, is about, this is about equal to 0 0.7. So it is much higher than 0 0.7, am I right? So it is uh, 1.13, Nine uh, one eight uh, eight eight. That is, you know, it is quite high value. So, uh, so it is clearly indicate the data that is reported here that is not proper. That there, there is some mistake in the data because this is not following that uh, that uh, the rule that you know that uh, that uh, thermodynamic coefficient that we have for the for the anaerobic process. So well, what we have, we have what we have done. The, the this is exactly here. It is pointed out. This is 1.19, which is more than 0.7. So uh, for validation of the data of thermodynamic coefficient, anaerobic process should be done. Now, how we can validate that? You know, what is this? Uh, we we shall have to find out where where the uh, we we might have uh, committed the mistake. Now now in the anaerobic digestion process. What we what we have we we have we have uh, what we estimated we estimated the glucose concentration we estimated the cell mass concentration we estimated the ethanol concentration now usually cell mass concentration estimated with the help of gravimetric analysis it doesn't have much of mistake and say uh, the glucose estimation process uh, we do colorimetrically and uh, in case of uh, the ethanol. We usually do with the help of a gas chromatograph with very microscopic because a gas chromatograph results are very reliable because it minutely estimate the ethanol concentration. So uh, what uh, what we can expect that uh, out of this data we can expect the colorimetric analysis of the substrate might be wrong. So what we have done we multiplied some factor because with the uh, will substrate concentration and try to find out that what is the respective value of y p by s and y y p by s and y x by s and what we have observed if we multiply it by substrate uh, concentration uh, concentration by 1.7 then y p by s value is coming about 0 0.317 and y x by s 0 0.062 so uh, so then if we calculate the eta eta value and epsilon p value is coming uh, 0 0.079 and epsilon p 0 0.621 if you if you sum do the two things this is coming about 0 0.7 so but then and all, only then that results will be okay so from that we can conclude that if there is a something wrong in the substrate uh, estimation and if we multiply this substrate uh, concentration by 1.7 then and only then your results will be okay. This is how we can we can find out the validity of the experimental results. So in this lecture, I try to uh, talk about how we can do the analysis of the of the biochemical process. By I have given two examples. One is the with respect to cell mass formation using the aerobic process, and that is the anaerobic process. The aerobic process. We convert the carbon to cell mass, and the anaerobic process we convert carbon to cell mass as well as the product. So, and finally, we try to find out how this uh, stoichiometric analysis help us to find out the uh, validity of the experiment results. And, uh, and and I think from that you will get the idea that how this stoichiometric equation can be applied. Also, we calculated the heat evolved. And for the production of per gram of biomass, per gram of substrate consumed, that also can be easily estimated. Thank you very much.